Hi there, I'm Christy Wilhelmy from Garden Nerd, and I want to talk to you today about perennial vegetable and fruit crops. Why perennial? Perennial is really important for any self-reliance garden. So unlike the annual vegetables that I talked about in my quick growing crops video for you know self-reliance coronavirus garden perennial crops drive down deep roots and so they establish themselves in the ground making them more drought tolerant disease resistant and pest resistant which makes work a lot easier for you so i'm going to talk to you about some of my favorite perennial crops there are a lot out there some of them are really obscure though so i'm just going to stick to the ones that you probably care about the most but first a quick definition Annual crops live out their life cycle in a season and then they usually bolt to seed, they send up a flower stalk and they set seed and they die. Annuals are like that. There are the quick lettuce crops and spinach and kale and all of those things. Although some of those can live a little bit longer than a year or a season. Perennials are things that live longer than a year and most of the time they live a lot longer than a year. So like fruit trees, for example, you plant a fruit tree and you get fruit for maybe a decade or more and you know what they say the best time to have planted a tree was five years ago but the second best time is today first up artichokes now artichokes get to be about five feet in diameter but you can grow them in a container the artichoke i have right behind me is in a pot so you can pretty much grow it anywhere as long as you give it enough room little elbow room artichokes die back every year pretty much all the way to the soil but they send up new shoots and produce year after year after year if you do plant them from seed they probably won't produce fruit the first year but after that they will and for years thereafter next up tree kale or tree collards as it's sometimes called it's a perennial kale it's a little tougher than your toughest regular annual kale but it's delicious it's a lot sweeter I find it sweet kind of like a red Russian kale and it propagates from cuttings. Now I have two other videos on how to propagate tree kale from cuttings, so you be sure to check that out if you wanna grow it from, for yourself in your own garden. It does require trellising. As you can see, it grows very tall and it needs a lot of support. So I'm actually using a tree post to hold this thing up. And it will grow as tall as 10 feet, maybe more, and it will produce for years and years and years and years, and it doesn't get aphids. Next on the list is asparagus. It kind of goes all over the place. It makes these beautiful fronds after uh, the tip of the spear opens up. And the cool thing about asparagus, okay, it does take three years to get established. The first year you don't pick anything. The second year you can pick a few spears. And the third year from then on to like 20 years, you can pick whatever you want. So it's a good place to start it is in a raised bed or some place where you can dig a trench about 18 inches deep and then slowly <laughs> and then slowly fill it with soil as the crowns start to grow. Uh, crowns, by the way, are bare root roots that are all joined at the top and you spread those over a cone of soil when you plant them and then they you plant them in winter or the dormant season and then they sprout in spring. These are first year crowns and so I didn't pick anything from them this year but I will be picking from them a little bit next year and then from then on, third year on, like crazy. There are a couple of other crops that you might be interested in growing that take up a little bit of space. I'd give them about three feet in diameter. One is rhubarb, which of course everybody makes rhubarb pie and compote out of. And the second is sorrel which is a lemony leafy green that people throw in soups and salads. Now, of course, there are annual herbs and there are perennial herbs. The annual herbs like cilantro and parsley tend to give up the ghost kind of early, especially in the warm season, but the perennial herbs stay going all year long. They may die back, uh, but they return with new growth season after season. And those are things like thyme and chives and oregano sage rosemary mint lavender and even lovage which is a very celery like looking very celery and parsley like looking perennial herb that gets up to six feet tall oh hi mittens you've got spider webs all over you Meow. Meow. 
Okay, we're rolling. Yeah, we are. <laughs> All right, let's talk about fruits now. Perennial fruits like strawberries. Now, in some places they're grown as annuals, but if you live in a warm winter climate, they will overwinter year after year. And if you protect them in a place that does get frost, you can make them last for years. Now, a lot of places tell you to replace the plants every two years or so. I dig mine out with the roots, set them aside, add about two inches of compost, and then replant them every year and they will start behaving like brand new plants all over again. Also, I cover them with bird netting to keep the critters out so we get all the strawberries. And let's not forget cane berries. Blackberries like the ones behind me, boysenberries, loganberries, raspberries. Those all grow from canes. They're usually thorny, but there are thornless varieties available and you can start them just from a cutting and they will kind of take over everything. So make sure you keep pulling up the runners, give those to a friend so they can start their own. And uh, also blueberries are a perennial fruit as well. Plant those in acidic soil and enjoy them for years to come. And no perennial fruit discussion would be complete without talking about fruit trees. This is a loquat tree. It's growing in a pot. I've got pomegranates and citrus trees and stone fruit trees, and they are either in the ground or in pots. We keep them here at Garden Nerd headquarters. We keep them to eight feet tall, so we don't need a ladder to harvest them, and we can plant trees more closely together. Uh, either way, plant fruit trees now and enjoy the benefits years from now. Now there are some crops that are considered biennial, which means they live longer than a season, but not quite as long as perennials do. Um, I tend to not like to call them biennials because some biennials don't behave as biennials where I live. So I call them semi-perennials. <laughs> and those are things like Swiss chard, which can live for a year and a half, maybe. Um, Christmas lima beans and a lot of lima beans, if you leave those in the ground, they will get a trunk about four inches around. I broke a digging fork trying to get one out one year because I left it in for a year and a half. Uh, and also some kales will live a lot longer. You just keep picking it and it keeps getting taller and taller and taller because it grows from the center. Um, also, green onions are kind of fun. So if you just harvest the greens, leave a couple of uh, stems growing, the, that same root base will keep shooting out greens for at least six months, maybe longer. So those are fun too. So with a little bit of planning, you too can have perennial vegetables and fruits growing in your self-reliance garden. They fill in the gaps between the seasonal crops so that you can be eating year round. She's smiling. If you like this video, share it with your friends and don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so that you will find out when our next video comes online. For more information on growing all kinds of fruit and vegetables, perennials and annuals, visit GardenNerd.com and consider becoming a Patreon subscriber to support the work that we do at Garden Nerd. We appreciate it. <laughs> Happy gardening!